It all brings us to Alan Hans Nixvix. He's in the Squarespace, Al Troutwick on the Chase Bridge. So let's get started with the collision on Monday night between Mitchell Robinson and Kyle Lowry. Thankfully, he only sprained his ankle. What's the aftermath? Well, you're going to give it all away right there in the intro. Well, we remember this incident from the third quarter in Toronto. and It did cause some mild controversy at the time and, and right after the game as Mitchell Robinson going after a rebound chasing down Kyle Lowry does run into his legs. We'll show it to you right here. As you can see him chase him, goes right into the back of his leg. Now remember, Kyle Lowry had just missed two games with a left ankle sprain. This now became a right ankle issue that they just ended up calling soreness after it. Kyle Lowry said he grabbed me and pulled me down. Don't think he did it on purpose. I know he didn't think he was going to hurt me. I think he was just trying to stop the play. He also went on to say, though, that it was a little bit dirty. I don't think he did it on purpose, though he did say again. So, again, those types of words certainly got back to Mitchell Robinson. And Mitchell Robinson, if you watch that play, by the way, Lowry does pin his arm down and pull him with him. But still, Mitchell Robinson didn't like the fact that the idea was that it was a dirty play. So he went to Twitter, to social media, and he said, if you really think I tried to hurt him, you're wrong and need to look again. I was falling. I mean, I apologize for falling on him, but I didn't mean to. Now, again, the Raptors might have avoided a devastating injury. Like you said, it's just a mild issue for him right now. It also does explain why some teams do wrap some of their key players in bubble wrap this late in the season. But also want to point out this. The Knicks were down by 30 at that point, and at least Mitchell Robinson, although a little bit reckless, was still playing very hard. Okay, Frank Nielakina has been cleared to practice. Now what? Well, as you heard Rebecca Harlow report that earlier, is that he is cleared to practice, and, and as she said as well, he practiced with the Westchester Knicks yesterday because the Knicks were off after the back-to-back. -back. But he will not play tonight. Will he be available for Friday if he is? That's 10 games left in the season and for Frank Nielakina you might think well it's only 10 games these are going to be still very 10 very important games for him because he has not played much at all in the second half of the season he's only played 41 games this season due to injuries and DNPs as well he's missed 23 straight games so far It'll be 24 tonight with that groin injury that he suffered before the all-star break so it could be 10 very important games for him as everyone is auditioning for a job next season on a team that will have a lot of changes once we get to the summer. Now, the Utah Jazz recently had a fan incident involving Russell Westbrook. How did the Red Sox help out? Yeah, and this is obviously a, one of those moments for the NBA that uh, had a lot of people shaking their heads that this stuff still goes on, especially in today's NBA. And it happened last week in Utah, Russell Westbrook and a fan having that altercation with some racially charged words being said to Russell Westbrook and Russell Westbrook yelling some things back aggressively to the fan and that fan's wife. Now, Russell Westbrook was fined by the league for that part of the incident, but the fan was banned. That's the guy in the green hat right there. He was banned for life from the Utah Jazz from ever going to games anymore. But the Jazz wanted to make sure they get out in front of this immediately. So according to a story in The Athletic, Jazz President Steve Stark sought out the advice not just of NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, but also to the Red Sox. And the reason is this. Two seasons ago, early in that season, the Red Sox went through something similar. It was Adam Jones who plays for the Baltimore Orioles who dealt with some racial taunts from fans in Boston at Fenway Park. And it was an also ugly incident for baseball that the Red Sox wanted to deal with. And how they handled it was an apology, a public one, to Adam Jones. And in fact, in the very next game that Adam Jones played, this, he got a standing ovation from the Boston fans at Fenway Park. And that was something that you put a good, you put a positive ending on a very negative thing. So the Jazz had that impact as well in their next home game where Gail Miller, the owner of the team, went out and spoke to the crowd. That was something that went all around, that went viral around not just the league, but social media by the way she addressed the crowd and tried to implore them that this is not who we want to be. And so now we wait, wait and see the next time Russell Westbrook shows up in Utah, how do the fans greet him? Well, they don't play again this season, more than likely will not meet in the postseason. So we'll have to to wait till next season for a story that I don't think people will forget anytime soon. It is time for a sneaker week, stat of the night. It is. You know what? Let's go with number one, as in the original. And we have here, right here, something very special. In fact, we have history right here. These are one of the original Puma Clydes. When I say one of the original, I mean one of the first editions of the Puma Clydes, as you can see right here. And I'm going to show you the bottoms for a reason. They've never been worn in 45 years. Now these are Eddie Curtis, who is the uncle of our producer, James Costell, had these in his closet for, the, for a very long time and has never worn them. Now remember, 
our very own Walt Clyde Frazier is one of the very first, in fact, the first NBA player to have his own sneaker. And so he is a trendsetter, as we know he is fashion-wise, but also in the sneaker industry. I'm holding right here, living history, and in fact, not only are they never worn, they were never laced until tonight. I just felt like they'd look better if we laced them up, so we did. Now these are 10 and a half, so they won't fit me. Al, would they fit you? No, they would not. They will not. Well, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to find Clyde, I'm getting them autographed, and I'm running to eBay as fast as I can.